To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles. To be or not to be is the opening phrase of a soliloquy in William Shakespeare's play Hamlet. It came to mind earlier this week when I was asked by an advocate whether he should invest in RSPs or not, and I quickly answered, to RSP or not to RSP, that is the question. It was then ironic timing that a friend on Twitter posted, don't assume that the established ways of thinking about business are true and perfect just because they are established. I instantly thought, Eureka, why do we need to assume that the established ways are true anymore? January 2nd started what the banks and financial institutions refer to as the greatest season of the year, RSP season. The time of year when TV and print ads all try to convince you that you need to rush to your local bank and make an RSP contribution before the government imposed deadline of March 1st. They try and tell you how important it is that you put as much money into your RSP as possible and they might even offer to set you up with an RSP loan. But it's not just a case of checking out if there's enough left in your bank account for a contribution or thinking about what you'll invest in. Instead, you need to start by asking yourself the serious questions like what are your long-term needs or are RSPs the best vehicle for me? But take a step back for a minute. Banks control about 97% of the assets in Canada and the big banks are the Government of Canada's number one collection agency. Ever wonder why there is so much money being spent to attract your investment dollars? People need to ask themselves, how does the RSP fit into my total plan? And then stand back and ask the question, how can an RSP benefit me? I can tell you how much it'll benefit the government. Aren't you curious why there are no commercials telling you what happens when you actually need the money? Or what happens to your RSP account when you pass away? The RSP began in 1957 and it is now 55 years old, but that doesn't mean Canadians still don't get confused about what they when they get the most benefit in contributing to an RSP. Before tossing in your cash, ask yourself, should I put in the maximum allowed? Should I postpone or skip contributions this year? How will a contribution be a benefit? How will I pay for it? And what are my alternate options? There are a few scenarios where an RSP contribution makes sense, but we educate the majority of our advocates to avoid RSPs at almost every stage of life. I was pro RSP until about 2005 when an older owner of a manufacturing company here in Guelph said to me, Kevin, what does RRSP stand for? I told him what I knew and then he said to me, Kevin, what is the first letter? I said registered. And then he said, who is it registered to? As soon as he said that, I knew exactly what he meant. Anytime the government and our Canadian banking system invest a dollar to promote anything one needs to ask in whose interest are they doing it for yes it is true that when you make an rsp contribution you get an immediate tax deduction and you benefit from tax sheltered growth or more likely loss but an rsp is one of the most worst investments due to taxation at the time when you need to use the money or you die the concept was sold on the premise of get a tax break today and then in retirement you'll be paying less tax. The reality is today is the highest tax that any retiree is paying, but tomorrow may be worse. Explain to a family why 60% of their parents' estate who invested heavily in RSPs was lost or stolen to taxes or fees. Interestingly enough, it was announced last week that high income seniors will have to pay more for services that have been free in the past another form of taxation. There was a time when you had to access the capital inside your RSP when you were 69. Then the markets turned and the government changed that age to 71 so seniors could recover their assets. But in reality, the government rarely does things for our benefits solely. It also benefited them. When you take money out of your RSPs, it is included on your income tax at 100%. And the worst thing is to explain to a 71 year old who's been sat on their RSP account why they're paying more in tax than they've ever made while they're working. And at the same time, because they did such a great job of saving while they're working, 
They now make too much money and they're losing their old age security because of income tested clawbacks, another form of taxation. If you're in a low tax bracket, if you don't have the cash, if you're an investor seeking growth, if you're an investing for an inheritance, if you already have a lot of money inside an RSP, or if you have bad debt, then avoid worrying about rushing to your local bank branch before March 1st. There are many other tools out there, like the tax-free insured savings account. And as C.S. Lewis once said, there are far, far better things ahead than any of the things we leave behind.